Okay, we are going to be starting Unit 10 today. So our notes are going to be Unit 10, Lesson 1, An Introduction to Exponential Functions. After the, watching this video, you should be able to say that, 1, I can compare and contrast different exponential functions from an equation. 2, I can explain the growth and decay of an exponential function in terms of its base and the growth and decay factor. And three, I can describe or explain the difference between linear and exponential functions, the distance between quadratic and exponential function, and the key features of an exponential function. All right, below are the exponential functions and um, growth and decay formulas. So if you can go ahead, this will be a great reference sheet for you to come back to. Um, and as we go through the examples, it'll start to make a little bit more sense. Um, here's the general form for growth and then decay. And then also what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the growth and decay in percents. So when we convert into percents, this is what we will be using, these different formulas as well. Something that you really need to know here, it says where the initial value of B is the growth factor. And then we also have over here where A is the initial value and B is the decay factor. B is really what we're going to be looking for when determining between growth and decay. Um, if it's greater than 1, we'll be looking at a growth. If it's less than 1, then we'd be looking at a decay. When we graph growth and decay exponential functions, this would be a representation of growth, and this would then be a representation of decay. You can see the growth is going up more on a positive um, it's not necessarily slow, but um, this one's going up, so we can say it's positive or growth, and then decay, it's going down. So again, these are just going to be some good references for you. Let's take a look at example one. It says determine the or if the following equations are linear, quadratic, or exponential, and state how you know. Well, let's kind of look back and let's look at the standard forms for each of these. A linear equation will have the general form of y equals mx plus b. A quadratic would have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And then <clears throat> exponential would have y equals a b with x as an exponent. Okay, now again, the exponential will be the new one, but if we took a look at example A, B, and C, let's take a look at A first. We have f of x equals 4x minus 6. Right away, I know that there is no exponent, so that should be a red flag that it's going to be linear. It's right in this form, y equals mx plus b, y equals 4x minus 6. So for A, we're going to write linear. So if I were you, maybe in your notes, I would write no exponent. All right, B, right away, we do have an exponent. We also have, um, it's right in this form, quadratic. So we have AX squared plus BX plus C. These two are going to be the same as well. So this would be our quadratic, which is what we did all of last chapter. And then C, exponential form, obviously by process of elimination, that's going to be this one. But just so you know, we have 3 to the x power. So when our variable is in our exponent, we know that we're going to be in the exponential form. All right, so moving on really quick. Example 2 says determine the y-intercept for each of these. Now you could do these one of two ways. You can take the knowledge that we have known from the past, um, so just some shortcuts looking at A, I know that this number here on the end, that's always my y-intercept. So I could have easily just said 0, negative 6. Okay, that's our B value. We know it's the y-intercept. Or if you're unsure, you may forget those little um, hints, you can always plug in 0 wherever you have an x. So in this case, it would be 4 times 0 minus 6. These will cancel. So my y-intercept would be negative 6. Okay, for b, same thing. Um, if we remember our shortcuts from before, our c value is always our y-intercept. So it would be 0, negative 2. Or if you want, again, you can plug in 0. So it would be 3 times 0 squared 
plus 5 times 0 minus 2, which this would all simplify to negative 2. Now over here, this is the new one, but we have 3. Let's use our method of plugging in a 0. So we have 3 to the 0 power. Okay, anytime you plug in 0 for a power, we know that that's going to equal 1. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So for C, our y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. The U tries are for you to complete. Go ahead and flip on over to pay, or the second side. We're going to take a look at example 3. All right, it says use the given function to determine if an equation represents exponential growth or decay and identify the growth or decay factors and the growth or decay rate. So first we're going to go through and identify are these going to be growth or decay. Now on the first page we said that it was the B or which I'm going to refer to as the base that it will identify if it's growth or decay. Now I had said before that if it's greater than 1 then it would be growth. If it's less than 1 it's going to be decay. So it's going to be the number or again the base that's in front of that exponent. So right here we're looking at 2 and obviously 2 is greater than 1 so right here I'm just going to write growth. Okay, we're going to come back and um, complete these, but I just want to go through each of them and decide if it's growth or decay. So looking at B, we're going to look at that base or that number right in front of the exponent. This is 1 half, which also I'm going to write up here would be 0.5. Okay, and so we know that that's less than 1, so that would be decay. Looking at C, we have three halves in front of x. Now, just because it's a fraction, don't let that fool you, okay? This is an improper fraction, so we have 3 over 2, which is really the same as 1.5. And that's greater than 1, so that's going to be growth. And d over here, we have 3 over 5, which will be 0.6. And since that is less than 1, this will be decay. Okay, now it also asks to identify the growth factor. So let's go ahead and write the factor for each of these. The factor, which actually we already identified each of them, it's that base or that number in front of the exponent. So the factor for A would be 2. The factor for B is going to be 0.5 or 1 half. The factor for C is going to be 1.5, and the factor for D is going to be 0.6. All right, now it asks for the rate, and the rate we're always going to refer to in percent because when something has a growth or decaying um, factor, what we're talking about is how quick or how you know slow is it going up or down so maybe you're talking about the value of a car is it going to increase or decrease and when we talk about that we always talk about that in percent okay so how to figure out the rate so we identify that it's growth so we know that or we know that we're going to be using addition for decay we're going to be using subtraction so growth addition decay subtraction now how you're going to set that up it's always going to be one and then either plus or minus depending on the growth or decay. So for example, A, it's going to be 1 plus because it's growth. And then you're talking about rate. That's what we're solving for. So we're going to use R for the variable. And you're going to always set it up equal to your factor, which we already identified. That's why we did that first, which is 2. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and solve for R, which, you know, you may think this is a little easy right now. So we're solving for r, we're going to subtract 1 on over, so we get 1. Now, as I said, we want this to be in percent. So in order to do that, we always move the decimal place two places to the right, so this now becomes 100%. And since we were talking about growth, we also want to identify that this was 100% growth as our final answer. All right, let's take a look at B. We're going to set up our equation, so it's always that 1. We're talking about decay, so we're subtracting, and then we're solving for R for the rate, 
we're going to set that up at equal to our factor, which is 0.5, and then we're going to go ahead and solve. Okay, so we're going to subtract 1 on over, so we get negative 0.5, but we have it equal to negative r. Alright, so we're going to have to divide by negative 1 over here to get, because always when we're talking about a percent, it always has to be a positive number, but then from there we can indicate if it's going to be a positive, or I'm sorry, a growth or decay. So obviously this will now become positive 0.5 equals R, and we have to move the decimal place over two places. So we now have 50% as our answer, but do not forget, you know, we had it as DK, so this would be 50% DK. All right, let's look at C. We're going to be talking about growth, so we have 1 plus 1 point, I'm sorry, 1 plus R, got ahead of myself, equals 1.5. Okay, we're going to subtract 1 on over, and we have r equals 0.5 again. We need to move the decimal plate, er, point over two places, so we get 50, and we have 50%. Now again, this we'd have to identify as growth. So even though between B and C we have the same percentages, they mean two completely different things, and that's why identifying the decay and growth is so important. All right, last one for this example, D. We're going to have 1 minus, because we're talking about decay, 0 0.6. Ah, I did it again, I'm sorry. R equals 0 0.6. We're going to subtract 1 on over. We get negative R equals negative 0.4. We have to divide by a negative 1 so that r becomes positive. And we have r equals 0.4. Move that over two places. So we have 40%. Okay, again, we're talking about dk, so we'd have to indicate that that's 40% dk. All right, you tries are for you to do tomorrow. Let's look at our last example, example four. Now, what we're doing in this lesson, we're just going to be setting up our equations. Later, you know, as the days go on, you're going to actually be able to solve. All right, but for today, we're just going to work on setting them up and really kind of figure out what does it actually mean. So example four says, write the exponential function that models each situation. State the growth or decay factor and its rate. So the value of a house increases by 2% a year. All right, so we know that this is going to be an increase, so we're talking about growth. So looking at that first page, I'm going to pull up the formula of f of x equals a1 plus r, which is our rate, to the x power. All right, so now we have to fill in what we know. Our percent is 2, okay, so we're talking about 2%. That's going to be eventually part of your rate. So what you're going to do, you're going to do your A1 plus, now whenever we're going to be putting the percents back in the formula, we need to make them into decimals. So now we're going backwards. In the last example, we had to go to a percent, so we moved the decimal place over two times to the right. Now we have to take it back and move it over two places to the left. So we're going to convert this to 2, we're going to take the decimal place here, go two places to the left, so now we have 0 0.02. And still to the x power, because we don't have any other information other than that. So I'm going to set this back up to f of x equals a, and then times 1 plus 0 0.02 to the x power. We're going to simplify inside our parentheses, so now we have f of x equals a times 1.1, oh, sorry, 1.02 to the x power. 
Now, what you need to identify is your rate that you're going to be working with is 2%, which was already stated in the example. And then the growth factor, I want you to write this out so you have it in your notes. Your growth factor is what's going to be inside your parentheses. Okay. All right. Let's look at example B. If the value of a card decreases by 10% each year. So we're going to be looking at a DK problem. So we have f of x equals a1 minus r to the x power. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. We know that 10% is our rate. We might as well just put that off to the side right now. And we have to make that into a decimal. So we're going to move that over two places to the right. <clears throat> so we get f of x equals a and then 1 minus 0 0.10 to the x power. Simplify inside your parentheses. So now we get f of x equals a times 0.9 to the x power. Indicate right inside of here 0 0.9 is going to be your growth or in this case I apologize your decay factor because we're decreasing. Okay, so in your next videos, um, I know this was really just setting um, all these problems up in these equations, kind of figuring out, okay, what's the rate, growth factor, and so on. Um, like I said in the videos ahead, the lessons ahead, you guys are going to really uh, be able to solve um, these types of problems and kind of make a little bit more sense of them. So you have already had the prereq video, now this is the first introduction video. Um, so just get ready for Unit 10. If you need to, please rewatch these videos um, or come see us for extra help. Don't forget on this back side, um, 3, you need to make sure that you can, um, after watching this video, I can. If you have any questions, make sure you, you know, identify them, put a little star next to it, and just make sure you guys get some help. All right, see you tomorrow.